Well, good morning to you from this absolutely stunningly gorgeous morning here in the west of Ireland. I'm sitting in this rather creaky chair, so forgive the noise. And uh, Mr. Jack is here with me, tail wagging, loving the day. And somewhere over there, I, I think he's disappeared, the Sammy Bear. Beauty is still in the lodge, in bed. She's having a little sleep in this morning, so you must forgive her. Today is the very last day of March, so it's the day when I leave the lodge and move back into the cottage. Now I say back into the cottage, I've been using the cottage all the way through the winter, but I've been overwintering in the lodge because it's such a fabulously warm little place. There's a tiny little stove in there, as you know, and a few sticks, and the place is toasting. So just as the wisteria, can you see it along there at the top of the, of the veranda? Just as the wisteria is starting to come into bud, and very fast will be coming into bloom, that's when I finally leave the lodge and spend the rest of the spring and summer and autumn in the cottage. Mainly because the lodge gets too warm. But anyway, this morning I want to talk to you a little bit about rocket stoves. Now, in permaculture there is um, what's called a rocket stove. And um, it's just a very, very, it's very basic science, okay? You create a little stove that draws the air in fairly quickly and allows whatever is in the middle to burn thus more quickly and you get a very intense flame. So I'm pointing the camera in the direction of my tick on a rocket stove. Now I have built rocket stoves in the past using um, concrete um, concrete bricks and um, ordinary bricks and stones but uh, quite a few years ago this little um, oh, I forget the name of it now it does have a name and it's not Harry or Bert or Jemima it's actually um, <laughs> Sorry, Jack, don't don't be coming towards me like that because it's throwing me off my my mental balance here, which is pretty sort of unbalanced at the best of times. Anyway, look, you probably know the name of that, and you'd be shouting at the video and I say, and it's called uh, whatever. But this works absolutely fine as a rocket stove, and all I've done. Is I've created the fire in the little pit at the bottom. I've put in some fairly long bits of dry wood, bits that are probably too small to even put on um, to put into the um, you know the log burner, the wood burner, and on the top. I haven't got my glasses on, so you have to just bear with me. I'm going to be as steady as I can go here. I've put three little terracotta feet between the top of the burner and the kettle and that allows the air to escape and thus the flame to move up. Now I've got to go over and put a few of those logs back in but You can see I've made myself a pot of tea already and a lovely cup of real tea. I got my tin of tea leaves out and um, just made sure that I made real tea this morning because I fancied something with a, a nice strong taste to it. And uh, tea bags. Well, I think they're mediocre at the best of times, really. So 
there you go. How simple is that? So as you can see, it is really and truly a fabulous morning. There's real heat in the day. That's the roses. They'll very soon be in bloom. Which reminds me to give them a good feed. Because they've grown out of two tyres there, straight onto gravel. And uh, I say they. It is actually just one rose, two big stems. I've taken the thorns off the stems. And what I'll do is I'll give it a good feed with some of the compost, the well-rotted compost. And here's the bee. There's bees over virtually all the flowers because all the flowers are bee friendly. Um, over there in that old bottomless churn is Pieris. It's known as Forest Flame, but you can see the bees buzzing around it because it really has come into an abundance of flowers this year. And the flowers have been out since about the beginning of March. And those are I didn't know this, but I'll just show you. My daughter was up yesterday, and she's taken this great interest now in horticulture. She was telling me that these little flowers, the bees can't get into them. So what they do, they land on the flower, and you see the very top of the flower, they drill a little hole into that and get to the nectar and the pollen that way. Isn't that clever? It's getting its secondary growth now. You see all these lovely red bits? Well, those aren't flowers, they're leaves. And the reason why it's growing out of the old bottomless churn is because the Pieris needs to have acid soil. So that particular um, plant is actually growing out of acid soil, which is in the churn. I went to the bog and, and dug up some of the loose soil. Are oh, there's Sammy Bear? He's having to look for little mice because he knows there's little mice under that shed. And just above Sammy Bear is the ribes and you can see the bees working feverishly around those flowers. and see if we can see some. No, I've just seen one there. There's the beauty. Can you see? They absolutely adore those flowers. And as you can see, I've cloud pruned that bush. So you can see right through it. And then all the flowers and all the new growth is on the top. Which I think in a way is better for the bees. They certainly seem to appreciate it anyway. There's one, two, three. There's four bees of that at the moment. And then there's more ribes here. And then I've got lots of little figs over my fig tree. There's one, two, three, four. One at the back that's five, one there six, another one there seven, eight, nine, at the back ten, eleven, twelve, covered with figs. And that's growing out of a barrel, a wooden barrel. 
which has actually got euphorbia stuffed full of it and it's also got um, a rambling rose growing out of it look at that beautiful big beauty look at look at her isn't she beautiful Absolutely gorgeous. She goes up over the top of the cottage and away down the other side. Hmm. The pottager beds now are almost ready for planting out. I've been a little bit slow getting all together this year. But that's all right, because everything plays catch-up. It all gets there in the end. And I've been busy finishing off the, um, the lunacy garden for the bees and the butterflies. I'll just go and grab my tea. right in front of me. <laughs> Never been stung by a bee. Not at Beltona. It's as though they've got used to me. They say that bees have a memory. I think all creatures have memories. All sentient beings us humans we're so arrogant we think that there's no no other life form on the planet like us we're that special well I suppose we are special because we can speak and as I wrote in my book I think the reason why Mother Earth has spent all this time evolving us as a species is to be a voice for her. There's little beauty, look, can you see her? They're on the bed. Beauty! Now she's not going to wake up. She's just plonked in there now for the day. She came through this morning looking for her food because as soon as I get up she jumps up out of bed and races through and straight up beside the sink as I to say, you're not even going to fill the kettle until you recognise that I need my breakfast. <laughs> so, yeah, I feed her first. Oh, that tea is lovely. You know, there's nothing beats fresh tea. This whole thing with tea bags really is very sloppy. It's very... It's not very joyful, is it? Putting a tea bag into a cup and pouring water over it. I think there's a lot more joy in getting your little teapot ready, warming it, putting um, two or three teaspoons, sometimes all mixed. I don't ever put exactly the same tea in. I'll mix a spoon from here and a spoon from there. Pouring over the boiling water, then letting the tea draw, as my grandma used to say. Let the tea draw. And it's like drawing out the flavor of the tea. And then after about three minutes, some people say five, though I think when you get to five, the tea might start to what I'd say stew. And it sort of becomes a bit thick and um, heavy. There's a heavy taste to it. Tea should always be quite light, but very flavoursome. 
<laughs> I should get a job for Tetley's, shouldn't I? <laughs> this is true, you know, we, we have actually lost the art of tea making. We have given it up to that great slave time. Oh, haven't got the time to make a pot of tea. Just throw a tea bag in a cup. Is that all you're worth? Really? Is that all you're worth? A tea bag in a cup? Nope. I think we need to go back to our teapots and stop buying tea in, in paper cups and stuff like that. <laughs> we're losing our culture. It's true, we're losing our culture and it's, it's devastating. It's devastating because there's a whole generation of young people growing up who do not know the joys of having a cup of tea from a pot and actually sitting and watching it being made and waiting for it to flavour up and to draw. Oh, I think I can hear some of you asking me, what, what has she got in those bags? What has she got in those bags? Well, I'll tell you if you promise not to tell on me. Here in this part of Ireland, the councils prepare for winter. So, especially up on these hilly roads, you're not brown down the Erigna Mountains here. That's Kilrona Mountain, that's part of the Erignus. So every quarter of a mile or so, they'll dump a huge pile of very fine stone, like grit. And if it snows very heavily, then local people have got access to the grit and also council workers who come out a very long way from town also have access to the grit. Well, we've had a very mild winter. There's been no snow to speak of. There's been no real hard frost to speak of. So all those big piles of grit are still in situ. So what happens to them? Well, they just get sort of run over and plowed over and messed about and kicked about. And by the end of the summer, they're just a big mess on the side of the road. So I thought I'd go and do a little bit of cleaning up. I need some grit for my garden. So I've got one, two, three, four bags of grit. going to be of enormous helpfulness and use in my garden because some of the paths are quite slippy. In this bag is a pyrocanthus that a neighbour of my daughter's dug up. And the pyrocanthus is fantastic for the bees because the flowers are much bee loved and the berries are much loved by the birds. So that little pyrocanthus is going to go into the Lunasa garden. So there we go. Tea, rocket stoves and theft. <laughs> oh gosh. A public admittance. I wonder should I put it out on YouTube? Hmm. Could be used as evidence in court against me. Hmm. Anyway, just spotted this. 